Well, one of the most exciting applications in high-performance computing today is a field that started practically 50 years ago. Machine learning is a branch of artificial intelligence. Computers that almost appear to think. Computers that not only are programmed to do the same thing every single time, this program actually learns. A program in a computer that gets smarter the more data is presented. Well, this is a pretty exciting time for data. As you know, we are surrounded by data. There are torrents of data from your cameras, from your GPS, from your cell phone, from the video you upload, all the searches that we do, all the purchases that you make, and in the future, as your car drives around, we're going to be collecting enormous, enormous amounts of data. And all of this data could contribute to helping machines be smarter and solve problems that we can't possibly solve by programming it. It has to learn its way to anticipating what is the best answer. Well, machine learning is really, really exciting. There's a whole lot of different fields in machine learning. And one of the areas that has seen some recent breakthroughs, enormous breakthroughs, magical breakthroughs, simply amazing results is an area called deep neural nets. This is a really fascinating field. There are talks all throughout the week in this area. What's really amazing to me is that it's inspired by biology, computer programs running on massive supercomputers that emulates how the brain functions. And let me just explain very quickly, very quickly, how it works. Well, the way that we perceive an image, the way that we perceive an image, it turns out that the human brain has been designed to recognize edges. We don't see pixels, we see edges. And we have these neurons that are specifically designed, specifically learned, to recognize edges. And so the picture to the, to the right of the face is a whole bunch of edges. And our brain has a neuron for every edge, every type of edge. And so it turns out that when we look at something, those neurons fire up. The appropriate edge neuron lights up. Energy then gets transmitted down the, the synapses to the next neuron, where several of these edges turn into features. And it could be a lip feature, or a nose feature, an eye feature, ear feature. And you have a neuron that has learned to recognize an ear feature. It's just learned over time. And those ear features get combined with other ear features. And before you know it, you have a neuron that recognizes a face. Okay, so edges become features, features become objects. Computer learning, computer scientists, machine learning scientists call this classification or ed object recognition. And the way they programming is through a neural net on the bottom. They create a software program that resembles that neural net. Now, teaching this neural net to recognize images is an extraordinary challenge. You need lots and lots of images, just like humans do. We need experience. And it turns out that over the years, computationally, we're quite amazing. A breakthrough was done recently. It was called the Google Brain. A team from Stanford and Google worked on, built a computer of about 1,000 servers. 1,000 servers simulating a model of a brain, about a, a billion connections, approximately a billion synapses. Now, now that's, a, that's a rather simplistic view of a synapse and a neuron. But let's just, for the sake of argument, call it about the same. A billion connections, a billion synapses. It was trained by 10 million 200 by 200 pixels. 10 million images, 200, 200 uh, pixel uh, large. And it was done on 1,000 servers, 16,000 CPU cores. And it was trained in about three days. And so basically, this computer sat and watch YouTube for three days. Now, this was completely unsupervised, which is really the amazing part. It just kept taking the images in. For three days, this 1,000 server, 16,000 core, deep neural network trained itself over these 10 million images. 
at the end of those 10 million images, it discovered that there are two types of things that show up on the internet fairly frequently. It recognized faces and it recognized cats. Now this is the, the other amazing thing. The two gray images that you're looking at, those are the result of the programmers figuring out what is the image that most excites those neurons. What is the image that most excites the neurons? Not what does it perceive, meaning suppose you close your eyes, suppose you closed your eyes, and I ask you, what does a human face look like? Suppose you close your eyes and I ask you, what is your human, what's a human face look like? What's a cat look like? Well, it turns out that in this case, asking the Google brain, these are the two images that came back. And another way of saying it, this is what human face and a cat looks like to the mind of this new three-day-old computer, computer brain. Unbelievable breakthrough. Well, obviously, it's going to take a lot more than this to teach a computer deep ne neural network how to recognize all of the things that we know how to recognize. We don't recognize just face, we recognize specific faces. We don't recognize just cats, we recognize specific cats. And we recognize thousands and thousands and thousands more things. But this is what a, what a great start this is. This is called the Google Brain. It took 1,000 CPU servers, 2,000 CPUs, two per server, 16,000 cores, 16,000 cores. It consumed 600 kilowatts of power, a computer that cost approximately $5 million to do. Now, this is the amazing thing. So despite this amazing breakthrough, it's clearly true that this is just the beginning. Thanks, Lopal. This is a, a table, a chart from a researcher on machine learning, Ian Goodfellow, and he was comparing, and I think a lot of this data is extra, extrapolated from, extracted from Wikipedia, and it showed some of the, his favorite machines. There's a couple of GPUs in there, some supercomputers in there, and, um, and it basically shows this. A billion connections is about the number of synapses of a honeybee. And now suppose we were to take, so this is, this is Google Brain, about a honeybee, it takes about three days to train a honeybee to recognize two things, okay? Suppose we wanted to take and extrapolate from that, the Google Brain, all the way to recognizing capability, learning capability of a human brain. Well, it turns out, we have about 100 billion neurons. Each one of our 100 billion neurons has, has about 1,000 connections to other neurons. And suppose we wanted to train this brain, it would take, obviously, a lot more images to iteratively train those neurons. Let's say that we do that with 500 million images. Well, it turns out, you do the math, 100 billion, 1,000, so that's 100 trillion, 100 trillion connections versus a billion connections, 500 million images versus 10 million images, all of that compounded together, roughly speaking, CEO math, okay? About five million times longer to train this brain using the Google brain computer system of 1,000 servers. That five million Google brains translates to essentially 150 Yoda flops. I don't actually know the English for Yoda flops. I don't have to say that very often. But 150 million Yoda flops, just to put in perspective, the output of the energy of the sun is on the order of Yoda watts. Okay, so Yoda is of that scale. Y-O-T-T-A, not Y-O-D-A. Well, if we were then to say, um, let's model something as big as the human brain on that thousand 
CPU, 1,000 servers, it would take approximately not three days to train it, not three days to train it, but 40,000 years, 40,000 years. Well, it turns out we don't have that much time. We don't have that much time, nor do we have much more power to go simulate this thing, nor do we have much more money. And so we need a breakthrough of some kind. And this is where the next amazing breakthrough happened. And I think this is what kicked it all into turbocharge. It is the reason why there are so many machine learning developments all over the world now, and the reason why there's so much machine learning activity here at GTC. Well, it turns out the same team at Stanford, led by Andrew Ng, and the engineers at NVIDIA worked on this brand new way of tackling the problem, simulating now this deep neural net on GPUs. What took a thousand servers of about five million dollars is now possible to do on just three GPU accelerated servers. Three GPU accelerated servers, 12 GPUs in total. And interestingly enough, these GPUs has 18,000 CUDA processor cores, and the CPU has 16,000 CPU cores. Similar number of cores, but of course, the computational density is on a completely different scale. It's 100 times, 100 times less energy, 100 times less cost. Now, because of this breakthrough, any research department, any researcher, any company, big or small, can do machine learning at a scale of the project that was done at Google called the Google Brain. A huge breakthrough. Now, one of its major contributors is a guy named Brian Catanzaro. <laughs> Brian and I were joking yesterday, and, and I just, for some reason, can't say those letters together in my brain. And so the two neurons that we had to fire up so that I can remember it, and Brian and I have known each other a long time, and, and, and I just cannot remember how to say that. I, I just can't speak English. I can't speak Spanish, I guess. And um, the, the two neurons are cat and Zaro. If I r initiate those neurons, cat and Zaro comes very naturally. Now, Brian's going to teach us um, how deep neural nets work by showing you a couple of examples, a couple of examples, and it's really, really cool. So, Brian, take it away.